Uh, greetings and welcome once again to the weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where each week we attempt to put forth a topic out there into the ether that people can use, actually use in their everyday life. Uh, many times I'm sure that you've heard that when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that? Have you heard that phrase? Mm -hmm. Did anyone ever give you the lemons? Or the water, or the sugar, or the container, or the pitcher, or the instructions. No. no. Well, that's what we that's what we try to do here. We actually try to people give hands-on situations where they things that they can actually use in their life, and not merely lip service. Uh, and my name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair, a holistic and integrative uh, psychiatric facility, where as you become uh, acquainted, that we treat people we do not treat diagnoses. So today I'm uh, privileged to join by two of my colleagues and on my left would be... My name is Derek Coleman. I'm a physician assistant student from Chatham University. And on my right? Um, I'm Emily Woodall and I'm a physician assistant student from University of Mount Union. And great, in any mortal words of our dear friends Emerson Lake and Palmer, welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. So today, what we're going to last week, uh, for those of you that joined us, we were beginning to have a discussion about the aging process and how the lifespan can affect individuals at, at various ages. However, in continuing our conversation from last week, what we'd like to do is face some some uh, some ending uh, lifespan when when people are approaching. Uh, their golden years and tell me what type of some of the things that they experience in their life. Um, so they're experiencing a lot of life changes, um, particularly financial changes. Um, the cost of living has substantially gone up from when they first started working and saving money. And so, you know, their savings are depleted a lot of the times. And I know a facility back where I'm from cost over $5,000 a day, a nursing home facility, and that's just not feasible for many people to live there. So they're facing a lot of financial difficulties as well as their health. Um, health costs are rising and while their health is declining. And a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of issues with insurances and Medicare. And they find themselves at the end of the month um, faced with the problem of do I buy food or do I buy medicine? You know, they're facing a lot of areas there. Um, they're also struggling with emotional changes. You know, they've, they're grieving the loss of their friends and their family, and they're becoming more socially isolated. They're starting to have negative thoughts about themselves and about their life, and they're becoming more depressed as well. And as physician assistants uh, in the making here, during your psychiatric rotation here at Seclair, uh, you've, I'm a mad but suspected in your previous rotations that you've encountered uh, elderly yes. patients. So tell us a little bit about that, Derek. Tell us some of your experiences in dealing with... Uh, well, I actually did a rotation uh, dealing with surgical oncology patients that a lot of them were in stage cancer diseases and they were inpatient at the hospitals and they were a little bit opposite. Um, they were actually accepting the fact that they were coming to the end of their lives and enjoying it and having family members come in. And so I saw a side of it where they knew what was coming towards the end versus something that was abrupt that they didn't know was Coming. Well, of course, and uh, coming strictly from the 12-step world, Emily, we actually prefer to be called long-timers rather than old-timers, <laughs> <laughs> so that might be something that you might want to keep in the future. So you're talking about, you're talking about the natural progression, okay? The natural progression. You're talking about uh, some declining health issues, some mobility issues, for some financial concerns, uh, some lack of sociability, simply because uh, some of your friends are crossing over and passing on. Uh, so tell us, tell us what type of, tell us what type of that leads to an individual's mental state. Um, so a lot of times I would, um, they would become very sad and depressed. You know, they seem to be outliving all of their friends and family, and they're kind of just left alone with themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've become socially isolated, they're becoming more and more depressed, and they feel like they don't have anybody to reach out to because they've outlived everyone that they really cared about. Well, that sounds like a, that sounds like not a very pleasant place to be. So what are some of the symptoms of depression that not only individuals can look out for, Derek, but perhaps other caregivers, uh, other loved ones can watch out for? Um, well, one of them is having a, if by definition, a two-week period of loss of interest and in stuff that they used to enjoy um, are hopelessness. And um, additionally, there can be changes in sleep, whether it's increased or decreased. Their interests are going to change. They can uh, be guilt, have senses of guilt, 
the changes of energy levels, changes in concentration. Appetite can be increased or decreased depending on the type. Their psychomotor skills can change and there also um, can be tendencies to lean towards suicide. So could you expand on some of these, Derek, like the uh, psychomotor uh, activities and, and a few of these other type of negative type of ruminations? Yeah, so, well, the psychomotor part would be more so like when they're doing, not doing things that they enjoy. So they have a lack of energy and say they used to be able to go outside and go walk on a beautiful spring day and they're losing that. So then it would lead to some increase of their depression. Well, certainly. And these are all signs, uh, Emily, that uh, caregivers, uh, certainly as a physician yourself, that you can explore a little bit more thoroughly when, when you're with them. Uh, so uh, when you're dealing with a depressed individual, when you come up to them and say, put a smile on your face. Oh, come on, cheer up. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Snap out of it. Get a grip. How does that work? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Although individuals, and maybe you've done it yourself, I have, that's it's your best of intentions. Okay, it's absolutely the best of intentions. So, so Derek, I'd like to, you two to talk about this. How can we assist individuals? How can how can caregivers not only assist themselves, put themselves in a a, mind, a wise mind, a knowledge based mind, to be able to deal with somebody like that? And dealing with an elderly mother myself, it can be awfully frustrating. I think one of the most important things is to be able to listen to your patients um, at this stage of their life being able to listen and understand what their quality of life would benefit from i think most of their anger and depression which leads to caretakers anger and depression comes from their quality of life being different so as a caregiver if you can improve that patient's quality of life i think it'll be kind of like a rebound effect on what would be how you would be acting towards them as well Excellent. So what uh, Derek was talking about, Emily, was 80% of interpersonal interaction and communication is listening. So have you ever been in an assisted living home? Have you ever been in a nursing home? Have you ever, ever been around some long timers? Yes. Okay. And what do these what do these folks want more than anything? They want to tell their story. They want to be heard. Do you think sometimes that these individuals are feeling like they're being heard? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So in our in our society, where's the emphasis placed on Derek? Is it is it placed on uh, the aging process and holding people in esteem and helping people, out, or is it associated? How was it? What what are most of these commercials? What was our culture pointed toward? Medication. Medication and staying what? Staying old or staying healthy? Staying healthy and young. Mm -hmm. Staying healthy and young. Uh, all these different types of uh, things that people can do to enhance and make themselves look young. Okay, is there? Tell, tell me, tell me when it became a crime to become a long timer. Tell me when it became something to be embarrassed of or ashamed of. I mean, I'm 25, and I don't think there's ever been a point that I were being old as something that someone wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but how do how do we make these people feel today? We make them feel less than. We make them feel that they're not important. We what what demographics do the advertisers look for? It's certainly not long timers, is it? No, absolutely. So in other cultures, uh, in particularly in our Western culture, in the United States, we're an individualistic based society. Okay, where uh, an individual should be able to solve every problem themselves. However, in particularly in Asian uh, cultures and philosophies, they have more of a group mentality. Okay, where elderly people, long timers, are more revered for their wisdom and they're actually listened to. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when a person is not listened to, Emily, how does that make a person feel? Makes them feel inadequate and that yeah. they're not important. Mm -hmm. Inadequate and not important. So if you have continued feelings of adequacy and not being important, where does that lead to? Depression. Depression. Negative thoughts about yourself. Negative, negative thoughts about yourself. So. If you're a long timer out there and you happen to be either listening or watching this particular show, uh, what we'd like to, for you to do is to step back and be able to be the observer behind the thinker. I'd like you to step back for a moment and view your life as a movie. Imagine that you're going to the movie and that you're sitting in the front row and you're watching these scenes and you're watching these movies. Please listen to the dialogue. Please listen to the characters. Please listen to what they're saying and be a non-judgmental observer and write, your, write a review of that movie. What are you seeing? 
What are you what are you feeling? What do you what what's the character? What are they doing to? And also, Emily, the important thing, how could I help this character? How could I help this actor up on the screen? Forgetting that, that it may be your life. How, how can I help this person? Okay. And then when we sit back and become that observer behind the thinker, and what we're doing, we're talking about mindfulness. We're talking about mindfulness. So in the 12-step world, it's very difficult to think our way out of a situation. Normally, we think ourselves into situations. Okay? Do we not? Mm -hmm. We think ourselves into situations. And sometimes it's so hard to ask for help, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is so hard. So my suggestion is, is when someone wants to do something nice for you, to let them. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about the idea of being the observer in, in a movie theater and watching, this, putting your life up on a screen and being able to accurately describe it? I think it's a good idea. I think it would um, give long timers a sense of, you know, instead of being inadequate and not important, that they mm -hmm. do have a great life and they do have a great story and it's nice to step back and just observe. Absolutely. And Derek, in the 12-step world, we call that an attitude of gratitude. When we get up in the morning, generally what we try to do is begin to replace our thought patterns and our established patterns of behavior. When we get up in the morning and think, how do I hurt today? Or what medicines do I have to take today? Or who isn't coming to see me today? Or oh, numerous things. Rather than just replace it with a simple sentence, what do I have to be grateful for today? What do I have to be grateful for today? So everyone's assignment out there is to view, just for one moment this week, view your life as a movie. I'd like you to sit back and write a review, a non-judgmental review of what you're seeing, what this character is participating in, how they're interacting with people, how they're feeling. And what's most important is how could I help that person? How could I help that person that I see? How can I help that person that I see? So any final thoughts from you, Miss Emily? I think that um, helping long-timers needs to become important for providers. I feel like a lot of times they're kind of just, you know, pushed to the side, whether done intentionally or not, or, oh, my back hurts, attributed to, oh, well, that's just you getting old, instead of listening to why their back hurts. I think doing simple things like listening and being mindful could really make a big difference. Absolutely. And when you're in with Dr. Chaudhry, do you feel that patients are being hurt? Absolutely. Talk talk more about that. I think that he is one of the best people to sit into a room and for you to express your story and be able to tell how you're feeling and there's no judgment. All there is is a listening ear and at the end of the day he's treating the individual, not the disease that they have. Absolutely, absolutely. And when a person feels like they're being heard, how do you make think that makes them feel about themselves? Wonderful. It makes them feel that they're important. It makes them feel that their voice is being heard, okay? And too often we've we've silenced we've silenced people's voices, we've silenced them. And my hope is that everyone out there can find can find their own. Any final thoughts today? No thanks. I know that you. I know that I had put you in a little state of panic. Uh, how about you, Derek? Any any final thoughts for you? I think I'm good. Okay, great, great. So Emily has a nice way that she's going to let individuals folks know how they can contact us. Uh, to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook, plus um, like us on Google+, Plus, or follow us on Twitter under uh, Seclair Life. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on YouTube.com slash Seclair Video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Please visit Seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And we certainly welcome comments, questions, uh, helpful criticism of this show. We certainly want to make it better, not only for ourselves, but more, most importantly, for those that are viewing it. And as always, we have a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing, perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we... Fish without bait. We fish without bait. Your assignment, as always, is to be good to yourself. So until we meet again, namaste. Namaste.